So we all know that Airbus has achieved great success with their A321XLR, an airplane which is capable of replacing 757s one for one and also competes well with the rumoured smaller 797 variant. However, the middle of the market spans a wider coverage than just that, with the smaller 767 variants also in need for replacement. These aircraft offer seating capacity close to traditional large white bodies without high ranges that aren't needed in this market segment. For this area, Boeing has proposed the larger 797 variant, but Airbus doesn't have a larger A321neo family aircraft. Instead, they are pitching the combination of A321neo and A330neo as a perfect solution spanning this whole market segment. With perfect performances for the lower end of the market, airlines have endorsed the XLR with a huge number of orders. But all the numbers for the smallest A330neo, the Dash 800, simply aren't anywhere near as huge. And that brings us on to today's analysis. Is the A330-800neo really a legitimate solution for the middle of the market? And if it is as capable as Airbus claims it is to be, why aren't then airlines ordering it? Is the A330neo a true middle of the market aircraft? Well, before we analyze this further, a quick reminder if you haven't already done so, to check out the Airplane Productions News Instagram page the new and future home for all future aviation news updates. Also, if you're new to the channel, a warm welcome and stay tuned for more new great detail analysis and epic comparisons coming weekly. By the way, with plenty of exciting aviation events on the horizon in this new decade of aviation, do stay tuned for some brand new aviation content coming soon on the Airplane Productions YouTube channel. This content will nicely complement the weekly detailed aviation analysis and epic comparisons and is certainly worth looking forward to. Alright, let's take a look at the A330-800neo from the viewpoint of the middle market segment. Let's start with a look at performance, and straight away we see a problematic gap. With the A330-800 being the longer range version of the medium to long range A330, its 8150 nautical mile range is way excessive for this market. Compared to the longer range 797 variant, the A330-800neo flies 3150 nautical miles further. The key to a competitive middle of the market aircraft is one that has perfect performances. But why then is additional range capability a problem? After all, more range does boost the aircraft's mission capability. Put simply, as the A330-800neo has evolved into one truly long-range aircraft, its airframe systems and engines are optimized for longer-range routes. These do all add more weight to the aircraft structure, meaning that over shorter routes, the A330-800neo is slugging around additional weight it doesn't need. Also, the extra power rating of the engines not utilized during lower takeoff weights results in higher fuel burn and maintenance costs, while higher takeoff weights also result in higher takeoff, landing, and navigational charges. That said, in terms of size, the aircraft is about the right size for this market, with seating for around 260 passengers in a typical three class layout. So now that we have identified the problem, how then could Airbus fix it? What Airbus has been trying to do is to sell the airplane at lower weights by derating the maximum takeoff weight and engine thrust. As the airplane is stressed less, maintenance costs are lower, while engine maintenance and fuel costs are also reduced when there is lower fuel injection. The maximum takeoff weight could also be reduced to below 200 tons. Why 200 tons? Well, aircraft that stay below 200 tons 
pay less takeoff and landing fees. Plus, the 797 will also weigh less than 200 tons. All these mentioned could come together in an A330 800 Neo regional variant, as Airbus has done up a regional variant of its previous A330 seal before. However, there will always be one big downside to such variants. You see, the 797 was an airplane purpose-built to fly certain distances with certain payloads. Hence, all systems of the aircraft will be optimized for such performances. When derating an aircraft, manufacturers are in some ways removing capability from an airframe, thus downgrading the aircraft and de-optimizing it, compared to regular versions. While derating the aircraft by either reducing the takeoff weight or engine thrust may help increase aircraft cycles and maintenance intervals while reducing maintenance costs as well, the airframe is ultimately still optimized for longer routes, meaning the airplane will still operate with a higher operating weight NT compared to the competition, which reduces the efficiency. Furthermore, simply deracing the A330 800 Neo will not reduce operational costs by 40%, as Boeing claims the 797 will do. And lastly, one more caveat of the A330 800 Neo variant specifically is that as it is a simple shrink of the larger 900 Neo, it has higher seat mount cost overall. And on shorter ranges, the Dash 900 Neo with its lower range but higher seating capacity and its lower seat mount cost is the more optimized variant. But then the Dash 900 Neo is too large to serve this segment and competes with the 787-9 over shorter routes. Thus, the A330 Neo in general is positioned too high to serve this middle market segment well. In terms of the cabins on A330-800 Neo, while a good cabin overall, it is clearly designed for the long haul in mind. It has a traditional wide body fuselage with 8 abreasts, while each seat is 18 inches wide. With its new airspace cabin, it also features the same new mood lighting, new latest IFE and wireless connectivity that would feature on Boeing's new 797. However, time flies and so does cabin technology, with new features exclusive to the 797 inapplicable on A330 Neo. As an example, the new fuselage on 797 made of carbon composites doesn't just help to reduce weight, but thanks to added stiffness, the cabin can also be pressurized to 6,000 feet compared to above 7,000 for the A330 Neo. The 797 will also feature new larger windows and higher ceilings with a cabin wider than it is high, meaning that you have the most spacious feeling cabin. All in all, in my opinion, the new A330 Neo's cabin is still perfectly comfortable for passengers even today, with most of the new amenities found on newer aircraft. The A330 Neo does also bring some benefits to the airline that an aircraft purpose-built for the middle-of-the-market segment doesn't, as it is based on the A330 family, one of the most reliable and widely used white bodies in the industry. It has lower maintenance costs, while pilots do not have to be retrained onto a new aircraft type. Also, it will offer more versatility to the airline, with the capability to fly short to longer routes with decent economics overall. Being a traditional white body, it also offers something the 797 with its ovoid hybrid fuselage doesn't, increased cargo capability. The 797 with its fuselage shape does offer high levels of efficiency over the shorter routes, but does also sacrifice cargo belly hold volume compared to the more traditional fuselage shape of A330 Neo. Also, as the A330 platform is more established, with development costs already paid over, Airbus is able to offer a larger aircraft with more range at an attractive price point on par with the smaller 797, which development cost and offerability still remains unknown. So then, with all this said, is the A330-800 Neo a true middle-of-the-market aircraft? Well, in my opinion at least, I reckon not. 
Let's sum up all reasons mentioned earlier, the A330-800neo is really a long-range aircraft, and utilizing it over medium-haul routes wouldn't deliver exceptional economics. Thus, it will be interesting to see how Boeing will seize this opportunity to finally break into this market with an all-new product, one that is optimized to fly these routes, delivering step change in operating economics, and giving Airbus tough competition ahead. Do you agree with the conclusion to this aviation analysis? And if you don't, why so? Comment below. Thanks for watching to the end of yet another detailed aviation analysis. Until we meet in our next video next week, wishing everyone a truly clear sky ahead.